Uh, it's a delight to have uh, Minister Finlayson here with us. He hates introductions, uh, and those of us who have often heard long and oleaginous introductions we will understand that, in fact, it's often best just to get straight to it. So without any further ado, Minister Finlayson. Yeah, that's the best introduction I've had for ages. Uh, yesterday I was signing a treaty settlement with Ngāti Ranganui and someone started introducing me and my, my love of the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra, which is true, and my love for the APO, and my love for this, my love for that, all of which was supremely irrelevant. So um, can I uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak in this venue? But I have to say I've found a better venue for arts conferences. This is not to bag the Michael Fowler Centre or the Wellington City Council, but indeed the Mayor and I were up at Massey University this morning where they have opened their new uh, school of design, and, I, and uh, it's available for conferences, Stephen. So it's a stunning environment, uh, very arts and uh, culture friendly, and so I strongly recommend it because um, when I've got a conference in mind for next year about future directions in the arts. I haven't told the chief executive of my ministry yet. Is he here? Good. Uh, and um, and, and don't, don't pimp on me, Marie. Uh, but uh, I certainly think that that's uh, going to be a very good venue uh, to, uh, that uh, Massey have opened. Uh, so can I welcome all the out-of-towners, especially those from Christchurch. Jenny, great to see you. Uh, I know how difficult life is for you at the moment. Philip, congratulations on your honour and all you have done for, uh, for Court Theatre. Um, and I recognise that uh, you're doing so, you're doing uh, even in the secular society, I can say that you're doing God's work and getting arts and culture back underway in that city, and that's so very important. This is um, a, a chance for me to do something of a stock take of the government's work program and to indicate where we're heading. Some of you may know that I've already indicated I'm Minister of Treaty Negotiations, which is a fantastic portfolio with lots of work. And I'm also Attorney General, which is not quite so much fun because I have to deal with judges. Um, but uh, at the arts portfolio, I had thought when I took office, I'm Associate Minister of Māori Affairs as well, but I thought the arts portfolio would be the fun portfolio, but there's actually a lot of work going on. And it's all interesting, and it's all important, and it all has long-term consequences for this country, whether it's talking about the future of Memorial Park or dealing with... Uh, heritage issues, legislative issues, there's a lot on. So I thought it, it, it could be useful if I outlined some of what I'm up to. Despite the tough uh, economic climate, I can tell you, um, and it will come as something of a shock, particularly it does to my political opponents, uh, but that funding for the arts has actually gone up slightly, and I, I thank all those who invest in Lotto, because that's had a, a lot to do with it. Uh, but it's, that, that's enabled us to do uh, lots of interesting things where um, if we were subjected to cuts, we wouldn't be able to do it. Um, I'm, my colleagues and I, and, and, and I say my colleagues because people like the Prime Minister and Bill English are tremendously supportive of, of what I do in this area. Um, they um, know that the arts do a great deal for our society, I don't need to go through the, the normal formulaic recitation uh, because it's all take, it can all be taken as read. But um, that is why we are doing quite so much in this area and why there is a lot more to be done. Uh, there won't be any increased crown funding uh, in the uh, portfolio probably for some time, uh, at least until we get back into surplus. Uh, but I've made strong representation on behalf of the cultural sector to maximise resources flowing through lotteries, and um, that has actually yielded very, very positive results. Sector-wide, there's a, a, a very large programme of work. Our reviews of key government cultural agencies will ensure the arrangements we have in place are fit for purpose in the 21st century. Some of what we're working on at the moment hasn't been done for a generation or so, uh, and it's good to take a stock take 
uh, of various organisations like Stevens Arts Council uh, and make sure that these organisations are really fit for purpose. That's why we've uh, reviewed the, the structure of the, the Arts Council, why, why we're looking at the legislation governing the Historic Places Trust, why we've had, um, I, I had Peter Jackson do a review of uh, the Film Commission and uh, uh, screen issues, and why, why we've undertaken a review of orchestral services uh, in this country. Let me say something about the Arts Council legislation, which is awaiting a debate on the committee stages in the House. A key milestone is approaching in October. Uh, that's when it will be enacted. You'll be pleased to know it's its uh, priority level has been upgraded. Every piece of legislation gets a certain priority number at the beginning of the year, uh, and this is now two, which means it has to be passed by the end of this year. I, I did a deal with some people where one of my other bills was lowered down, so this one could be raised. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the new Act, I can assure you from a user's perspective that your interactions with the Arts Council will be business as usual. This is because the changes are internal and are focused on streamlining the governance structure of the Arts Council. And I think Stephen will agree that means uh, less resource uh, going into maintaining or try for, for the poor staff at the Arts Council to try and um, attend to the needs of over 20 governors uh, and uh, we can focus on more frontline services. It's uh, a subject that I feel particularly strongly about because I served on the Arts Board uh, of the Arts Council for a number of years and was its chair between 1998 and 2001. The funder-provider split theory, which was so prevalent in the early 1990s, may work in some areas. It does not work in the arts. I was told that the Arts Council would be the great policy supremo and the Arts Board would do the delivery, but it di didn't work that way. Uh, and I found as chair of the Arts Board I was doing plenty of policy and I used to leave the Arts Council to do their five-year annually retentive strategic plan. There was some concern the new structure would mean less Māori and Pacific Island representation in the Arts Council's work. Well, that's, again, plain wrong. Representation is improved. It's going to be enhanced. The Arts Council will continue to do its good work as an advocate for Māori and Pacific art. Instead of being represented in subsidiary boards and committees, those perspectives and expertise will be represented at the top level of decision-making, informing policy, strategy and funding decisions. However, Māori members of the Council will continue to meet as a separate committee, providing advice on matters relating to Māori arts. But when I was chair of the Arts Board, I think it used to be the case, Stephen, that we would fund Māori art for Māori and Pākehā, and Te Waka Toi seemed to concentrate on Māori for Māori. It was an odd distinction that was made. It didn't really work in my view. And having a unitary council is going to mean far more effective delivery. I'm not a, a, a supporter and I've long yearned to be Minister of the Arts so I could do it. I'm not a fan of the funder-provider split concept in the arts. It's illogical. And I have to say, for those, who may, those of you who may think I'm out there merrily demolishing boards, that there's a similar trend in Australia. I encourage people, if you have a chance, to read the recent reform of the Australia Council, and they too want to get away from silos towards uh, a more coherent and unitary model. So I'm really pleased uh, that we're dealing with that issue uh, because I believe getting back to the unitary structure is the right one for the arts. Despite maintaining the level of funding in every sphere of government activity, we're obviously keen to see greater efficiencies, and I've already told you about the reviews we're undertaking. I want to see better, more innovative ways of doing things, and one way to achieve that is to have greater collaboration, whether it's between government agencies or between government agencies in the sector. So that means sharing information and resources, having constructive discussions, and working towards common goals, and that's happening now. One example is the, the, you know, the very 
useful collaboration between the Film Commission and Film New Zealand. Uh, and it's those sorts of collaborations, I think, that are going to be effective. One particular, uh, I, uh, one could almost say obsession of mine, is uh, improving cultural philanthropy. It makes you weep um, when you see what can be done with cultural philanthropy in the United States. I was on my way back from Ottawa and overnighted in San Francisco last week, went down to the San Francisco Symphony Orchestra because the program was, was fantastic. They're doing Sibelius' third symphony and I think Rachmaninoff's third, well, I don't think I know, Rachmaninoff's third piano concerto. And I was looking at the honours board of the Sydney, of the San Francisco Symphony. Uh, more than 10 people, I think, contributed more than five to ten million dollars to the um, Millennium Fund and those who had contributed over five hundred thousand dollars there are enormous numbers now I know we don't have Rothschilds and Rockefellers here uh, but it, it does make your eyes water to see that uh, an organization like the San Francisco Symphony I don't know where it ranks in the cursus honorum Chris of, uh, of uh, United States orchestras but um, they have reserves, as I understand it, of an, in excess of $100 million. Um, so what I'm keen to do is to see if there are, and have been keen from the time I became a minister, ways in which we can increase uh, philanthropy so that organisations like the orchestras can build up reserves, um, aid, and it applies to the opera, it applies to the ballet, uh, and um, ways in which we can do that, because I think uh, that's one of the most important tasks that could be done uh, in the next period. And that's why the Ministry for Culture and Heritage, the Arts Council's done great work on it, the Arts Foundation's doing good work on it, Philanthropy New Zealand are collaborating to action various recommendations over the Philanthropy Task Force, uh, the authorship of uh, which was Peter Biggs, former chair of the council before Alistair, uh, and um, the report I thought was a splendid piece of work, and so we're working towards implementing that, and I, uh, it's a, a real priority, I know, of the Prime Minister. We all want the cultural sector to grow and prosper, and we need to investigate the full range of options available. The Ministry is focusing on increasing awareness of the tax initiatives and donee status in the arts sector. Uh, so more organisations can understand the need to obtain donee status if they want to be beneficiaries of payroll giving and to offer tax relief on other donations. The Ministry is also going to update previous research to identify trends in charitable giving. This will include an assessment of the impact of our tax initiatives. For what it's worth, my feeling, and I'm very much looking forward to uh, the research coming out, is that uh, these initiatives are not well enough known and there has been insufficient uptake of them. Um, the Arts Foundation's New Zealand Arts Awards will highlight the contribution of cultural philanthropists and their new website, Boosted, will be a very welcome addition to crowdsourcing websites. The Arts Council's new Private Giving and Partnerships program will provide advice to arts organisations and develop fundraising capability. And the practical tools provided at this conference will enable arts directors and marketers to engage more deeply with audiences and potential benefactors and contribute to the government's goal of increasing private sector support for the arts. One uh, thing I'm really uh, proud of, and I acknowledge here the ministry officials have been working on it, Marie Brown in particular, is the Frankfurt Book Fair. There's a flurry of cross-agency activity in support of our presence uh, as guest of honour at the Frankfurt Book Fair in October. And I'm really pleased to see the arts carrying the torch for New Zealand at the fair, the biggest event of its kind, not just a book fair, but our position as the country of honour will enable us to project into the strongest economy in Europe and indeed into Europe itself uh, a slice or an, uh, an insight into the intellectual life of this country. So it's hugely significant. It's a wonderful opportunity. I have to say there's much more press overseas about our presence than there is in New Zealand. I think there have been a couple of articles uh, in the uh, Dominion Post uh, and the listener's been pretty good. But it's a fantastic opportunity for us and I really am pleased 
uh, at the support that's been shown by our sector to our presence there. And so what it's doing, um, Richard Taylor opened that School of Design at uh, Massey today. He's been very supportive. He's coming along uh, because he too is interested in seeing New Zealand showcase our innovation and creativity. Our literature, culture and creative industries will also put the spotlight on our education system uh, and it's great to see that uh, people, uh, well, institutions like Victoria University uh, have been, uh, Neil Quigley, their Deputy Vice-Chancellor, has been hugely supportive. Uh, other universities are involved. Uh, will show our potential as a trade partner and obviously our appeal as a tourism destination. Closer to home, the government's major priority obviously remains the rebuild of Christchurch. The Ministry uh, is coordinating the Arts, Culture and Heritage Collections Programme for Christchurch. The Ministry is working very well with the Arts Council, Te Papa, Naitahu, the uh, City Council and Sira to bring back to Christchurch the full range of cultural uh, creative and heritage activities to which they are entitled and the programmes being progressively rolled out. The Ministry and the Arts Council supported the City Council Plan's uh, vision for the arts, which was subsequently endorsed by Jerry Brownlee for inclusion in the new blueprint for the city. The Ministry's been working closely with the blueprint team on proposals for performing arts venues and arts precincts within the central city. And so I'm, I have to acknowledge, Stephen, the wonderful role the Arts Council's played. Uh, your leadership has been, um, I think, very, very good indeed. Uh, you've been on the ground, you've been working with artists to find new studio spaces, providing emergency grants, encouraging integrated and collaborative initiatives. You've, uh, the Arts Council staff have really, in my view, demonstrated that a national organisation can be highly responsive to local situations and I know that your work has been greatly appreciated by the arts sector in Christchurch. It's certainly been greatly respected by me. I think that when I was on the Arts Council I think it had a reputation for being a rather aloof funder uh, but I have to say in recent times uh, you've turned that around and um, I really do appreciate what you've been doing. The performing arts organisations obviously deserve credit for continuing to perform in Christchurch, often in less than ideal venues. I was there for one of the uh, concerts of the Christchurch Symphony Orchestra halfway through the first movement of Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto. The piano broke down uh, and uh, so uh, Paul Therese turned to me and said, oh, well, this is Christchurch. They managed to get it going again and, and we got right through it. But I think thanks to, um, I mentioned it to someone, Barb Glazer at the... Uh, at the APO and she managed to find someone who could lend them a Steinway. So it's that kind of cross-collaborative activity that's greatly appreciated. Uh, the, I have to say the Christchurch Festival was great. Uh, obviously it's been able to continue, albeit in truncated form, uh, and uh, I acknowledge the work of the organisers of exhibitions like Rhyme Nor Reason and the Christchurch Art Gallery's Out of Spaces exhibitions. Um, a fantastic renaissance in the court theatre and its new venue uh, and that's an indication of the strength of community commitment to the arts in Christchurch. There are many um, arts heroes in Christchurch who have kept the spirit of the arts um, alive and I really do congratulate the grassroots enthusiasts who colonised empty spaces with transitory projects like Gap Fillers, Art House Cinema and Music Venue, the RDU Station and the Manchester Street Dancer Mat. The Art Box and Beat Box development I think is an innovative solution to a dearth of gallery and studio spaces in the city and the support it's received from suppliers shows business understands the arts do obviously play a central role in the CBD, uh, making the CBD a vibrant hub of the city. Uh, so all this arts activity confirms the Arts Council's research with the City Council showing 90% of Christchurch people believe that the arts have a vital role to play uh, in the rebuild of Christchurch. They play a huge role in the recovery 
uh, of the spirit of Christchurch by attracting and retaining the workforce the city needs to retain its status as New Zealand's second city. My thanks to everyone in the art sector around the country, and I've given you some practical examples, to honorary New Zealanders like Sir Ian McKellen, who I think is performing in, at the Opera House in Wellington tomorrow night uh, and uh, as part of a, a fundraising initiative for the uh, Isaac Theatre Royal. This spirit of cooperation and goodwill is very good for the sector and for the continued health of the arts in our land. The collaboration, creativity and problem solving we're seeing in Christchurch will provide useful models for the way we think about urban renewal and arts development in the rest of the country. Um, I could go, as Mrs Thatcher once said, I could go on and on and on, uh, but the, uh, the coup put an end to Mrs Thatcher and I'll, I guess I'll stop here, but I just want to finish by referring to another project that's uh, of great importance to me. In fact, I was questioned on it about the, uh, at the select committee because it, its uh, reputation is spreading, and that is the work the APO and others have been doing on the Sistema project in Auckland. Um, we, um, I found out about this Venezuelan program, which is a tremendous success in Venezuela, uh, bringing, g giving opportunities to kids from poor suburbs to take part in uh, orchestral activities. And it's in the 30 odd years it's been going in uh, Venezuela, it's, uh, I think there are now 200,000 plus students involved in it. And if you're good enough, you get into the uh, Seaman Bolivar uh, Orchestra. And indeed, Barb Glazer sent me a, a text from Stirling today where she'd seen that orchestra perform. Uh, and I think that there's a, um, just a wonderful opportunity there. We've started it in Otara. And uh, there are some wonderful people in Wellington who are running one not being funded by the government. And I'm determined to see that program grow and spread throughout the land because um, I think it is um, a fantastic opportunity for young children to get to know classical music and to take their part uh, in uh, classical performances. Um, they're outside Blenheim Airport, there's a sign uh, a child in sport stays out of court, and I'm sure we'd endorse all that. Um, but there is nothing better than being part, I would have thought, of um, a structured arts organisation like an orchestra to give children insights into creativity and discipline. So that's a programme that, notwithstanding tough times, we've started in this country. And as I said to one of the MPs who was quizzing me at the Select Committee uh, the other day, come hell or high water, uh, I'm going to make sure it grows uh, in this country, regardless of the uh, you know, tough times that we've been through. So thank you very much for all you do. There are so many people out there who give and give and give. People like Dawn Sanders, my old friend who runs the uh, secondary school Shakespeare competition, had its 21st uh, anniversary just a few weeks ago, grew from nothing to be the hugely significant uh, arts project that it is now. Uh, and there are so many others who do so much for the arts. I thank you um, and look forward to working with you in this most interesting of portfolios for as long as he who must be obeyed wants me here. Uh, thank you, Chris. And uh, I know a number of people have expressed interest in whether there are a number of Hugo Chavez's policies that we'll be bringing to New Zealand. Um, and, and Chris, I know, was always keen for the debate. We're lucky to have a minister of such um, eclectic, dare I say it, Catholic tastes. And uh, I know how much it matters to all of us here to know that we have a minister who's so deeply engaged in the work that we do and that the arts does and sees it for all the benefits it can deliver. So thank you very much, Christopher. <laughs>